Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm George Call with something really new today. So what's new this uh, for this next series of paintings is a limited palette. So we've started off from going from 19 colors to six basic colors and that's what you're going to be introduced to today and it was quite a challenge. Um, I've never done this before. I've been challenged by artists who do this regularly to do it and I finally went over to the dark side to give it a try today. And I think it was um, exciting and also on the verge of fear, uh, making a fool out of myself in front of everybody. But I really want to go through with this and uh, continue forward and hope you do also. There's a lot to learn with these basic mixtures and the variety of colors that we can get from them. So with that, um, what else can I say? Get outside and paint. Get your paintings uh, critiqued and um, subscribe. So, and keep painting. You gotta paint on a regular basis and that's what I provide is consistent, good references, landscapes mostly, and um, on a continuing basis. All right, enough about all this. Let's get started with today's video. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to starting a new painting here on a Monday morning. And uh, I think this is the devil's backbone here behind my house. It's uh, open space. And it's very early in the morning that you can see from uh, this reference. And if you need the reference, please go to my website, georgecall.com, and uh, download it. Now, the big news this morning from the overhead camera, you can see something new. We're using and introducing a limited palette. Okay, what this means is I've gone from 19 colors to 6. Blue, yellow, red, and a gray, and a mixing gray, and a, a mixing warm. And... Uh, so this is a, a big test. Uh, I haven't done this before. <laughs> this is brand new for me. We're all going to go through this process together. Some of you are asking why, and I'll bring those questions up and answers here uh, during the process of uh, uh, the painting here in the next couple days. But I'm hoping that this will be a three-part class. Um, and I chose this specific uh, reference because it has a lot of warms in it and I think that would be a challenge for me, maybe for you, uh, with this uh, limited palette. So what I have is a, a white of any brand. I have a Gamblin um, Cad Lemon. I have a Cold Gray by Rembrandt. I have a Permanent Red Medium by Rembrandt. I have a Ultra Deep um, ultra blue deep and I have a Naples yellow deep that's it now I took this uh, took the liberty of taking this from a recent um, uh, plein air magazine article um, by Kathleen Dumphy and um, she spelled out every one of these uh, these colors so um, that's how we're starting today and if you think I'm a little bit nervous about this, you're right. I hate to make a fool of myself on camera, but I'm prepared to do that today. But I love a challenge. And one thing I notice about, um, I'm hoping this is going to help me as well as the new student, is that it's a limited palette. There's so many color choices out there. This might be a good basic starting palette and maybe one that we can continue to use on a regular basis. I think there's a lot of advantage to this, to this that I've been reading about and hearing about and being challenged by other artists um, for a long, long time. And I know I've had, a, I've had a lot of different colors and I love to experiment with different colors, but now I'm really feeling like this is gonna be a lot of fun and challenging. So I've squeezed out my paints and I'm going to get these off the palette here because what I also want to do is mix up some basic colors. Here's my 
my basics here, I got a 10, uh, it's like a 6, 4, and a 2. And uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, mix some, uh, some greens. So here's blue and uh, cad yellow. Nice dark green. You can add some grays to that, I'm sure, and uh, gray it down. And here's some ultra and some Naples. Boy, this new uh, ultra is very strong. And should be making a green here pretty soon. There it is. And I want to make some grays. So here's a uh, this gray color we have with white. And of course I'd like to make an orange because of the reference. So I'm using yellow and red. I noticed the difference in this uh, cad uh, yellow or cad lemon right away. When I squeeze it out of the tube it is really thick hard stuff without a lot of oil in it. And there's my orange. So I made some greens, green blues, some grays, and a, a good starting point uh, for getting started. Now I still wanted to make a good mixing area and I'm going to put that, still have a good mixing area down here in the lower left of my, my palette. All right, double checking my green lights. Everything's recording okay. And I'm gonna look for my scrubber. And what I'm using is an old bright number four, I think. And I'm gonna use that as my, my drawing. Now, what I see with my reference, I don't have much foreground and I wanna have more of it. So I'm gonna go to my gray a little blue to it. And I'm going to try to have a uh, starting line and I'm going to use this the, the, light be the line between shadow and light and I'm going to bring that up a little bit so I have more of it. Instead of having it so low, which I think the reference really has it down here, I'm bringing it up to below center. So this would be center, this is below center. And now what I want to do is, uh, the rock formation I think it needs a little bit more oomph on the far side. Anthony and I used to do stargazing up here years ago when we had these great telescopes. And that's my start here and I'm going to put more of an another more bump here than what is showing. And I think I'm going to move this over a little bit more and move him here and have more off to the right. So that's my start and I'd like you to go ahead and make those changes. I need to erase the lines here so I'm getting some turf on my brush. All right. Drawing is the foundation of a good painting so I want to make sure my drawing's looking okay and I'm thinking I need a little bit more oomph on this fella. And I'm going to bring him up here and then this is called the devil's backbone here behind my place. And it's kind of a, this is all sheer rock. What this was was an uplift to eons ago. And there's two sides of this valley. The other side is also uplifted and the center was hollowed out. So it's geologically it's a really interesting place. 
and I'm going to put a hump on here too. So I made this up more than what's really in the reference. So this is an angle and this is a vertical. So I've got to be thinking how I'm going to pull that off when I do this. I like this shadow right here on that little piece. And I think I'll make this even less here. So I'm spending some time on my drawing to where I feel comfortable with it. If you're following me on YouTube, you can turn this off, step back, and take a look at your drawing to see if, in fact, this is working for you. I know there's little details, other rocks in here and so forth, but please don't get hung up with detail right now. Now, I think up here I'm going to have some sort of cloud formation later. And I haven't quite figured out where that's going to be yet. But there's an idea of what I want to do. I want to make this sky kind of dark up in here so it has a tendency to show off this orange. So I'll be darkening this and this and maybe and have some dull lights in these clouds with some oranges in it. So I'll probably have a cloud A, B with some sort of connection in between. And this is where we get into the Bob Ross uh, theory of art. We just make it up, at least with the clouds. Now again, when it comes to the reference, I love references and so forth, and I love being out there in nature. And it's very important that you get outside and paint. But I don't always go exactly with what's going on out there. I want balance in my paintings, and if I don't get it in my reference, either in studio or outside, I'll add some balance, clouds and bushes and things like that. Well, from the reference, you can't see a whole lot of, uh, you know, what's going on. So we're going to have to make some changes there. So I want to have some shadow that comes up onto the verticals. And so this is going to be shadow on the, I mean on the, uh, on the angle. Now, as important as foregrounds are, particularly in our line of landscape painting, these are foundations to, to a, uh, something of interest in the painting. So we want to have um, designs that are going to be interesting to bring us into this painting and also support it. So what I'm going to do is put a slope on here and come up with some design that leads me into This painting. These are uh, designated, uh, these are going to be bushes. So I'm going to have bigger bushes in the front, I'm going to have medium bushes in the center, smaller bushes as we go back. What I like about the backbone, there's some sage, but it's just all these kind of creosote type bushes. I don't even know what the names of them are. But you can see I'm trying to designate some sort of slope going into this. So I'm using my uh, gray and um, blue. And again, I'm getting used to a new blue. I was using Winton, which is very weak. Uh, compared to this Rembrandt, which is really rich. And uh, add a little white to that. And uh, so I'm adjusting to this 
new gray. So that's my design as I'm going in there. Stepping back and I'm going to flush in a few more of these things. So I'm going to have bushes and I'm going to have base, which would be earth. Bigger in front, smaller in back. So it'll be more earth in front, less in back. So it's a perspective thing. And as you can see, I'm quickly coming up with something that makes sense that leads in here to my painting. And I want to thank the YouTubers that are giving me I know you don't come in on Zoom, you don't want Zoom, but I appreciate your feedback that you're giving me online, and uh, keep it up, I appreciate it, and always invite you to come to a Zoom class, because we have a good group, they're cool. All right, so now I'm... Cleaning my palette because I want to get up and start getting some big values in here. So let's start with some in between stuff in here and get some earth uh, tones in here. So I want to add some some warms and some gray. So I I mixed up some uh, orange, ultra blue and cad yellow light and it comes up with this delightful warm color it's a little too I need to get more cool into it there we go that is perfect so I tested it with my knife and let's get a, a brush in here so I'm just gonna get orange please ultra blue uh, well, I mixed up a, an orange, remember, uh, Ralph, so I used a red and yellow? Right. And I mixed that into um, Ultra Blue and uh, Naples. And I'm just putting it in thin. This is not a thick stage. This is a thin stage. And what this is going to help me do is to show there's going to be a difference between bush and earth. And this is a good base for it. I'll put some up in here. And now it's time for bush design. I have a little bit of this left over, this um, base color. And I'm putting that off to the side so I can have a mixing area. For the, for the bushes. Well, I know I'm going to start with something cool, so let's go blue, gray, and a touch of Naples. What a beautiful color. I am really excited about these mixtures. Oh, that's going to work perfectly. Let me get the stuff off my knife. I'm going to get back to my number 10 or 12, whatever you got that's big, and start getting that in. Oop, lost my image. Now 
My hope today is to get to block in without running over my time for my optimum time for YouTube is about 35 38 minutes. It's kind of a challenge every day to get that done. And I'm going to bring some of those up into here. I'm going to lighten that up as I go back so I added more white to the mixture. And I'll put that in. And I got a lot of white coming through. I'm doing a few dabs here to cover up some of those whites. Remember, this is blocking. This isn't, you know, detail time. Get that big brush in and do some bold strokes. I get on my students when they go pat, 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 pat in some small area, particularly at this stage. Be bold. Cleaning my brush and my palette. And I'm going to mix some more red and cad yellow light. Now I want to have a difference between this warm and this warm, okay? So I made one pile that you can see from the overhead of red and cad yellow uh, light. Off to the side I mixed in some Naples and blue. So I have one that's dulled down with the Naples and uh, blue and one that's just red and yellow. I'm going to bring in some white on the side of the brights. So I have a continuum here of lights to darks. I'll probably use all of them very quickly. So I want to use this duller stuff down in this area. I gotta get some turp in this to get some spread in it. I'm gonna bring some of the yellows into here too. I need a dark gray up in here. It's a good shadow in here. I think there's a few on here too. I cover the whole canvas because it's a good way to judge one color, one value next to another. Now I'm going to go to the orange and mix a little white in it and Get a little bit more of a statement of orange up in here. Might be a little bit of dark right there. <clears throat> Okay, Zoom students, how are you doing with these mixtures? And why not get a few super lights down in here in just a few places. So this is just white into a some of these darker things. 
I just did that for effect, and I think it's working. And I'd like to maybe run some some lights into here and here. Let me go back to my grays and I got some work to do here. Got a lot of halos. In other words, I got whites coming through in a lot of places. But what I'm most concerned about, I want some sort of a, just don't want random stuff. I want these kind of connected and disconnected to have some sort of a random sense about them. And I'll see what I can do about getting some color down on the bottom. I've got a lip there that's always causing me trouble. Well, what I need to do to get this canvas covered is to pick this, these worms up, get, put them back in my mixture pile, which was the warm orange. And I need to clean up my palette. And I want to get up in the sky next. You know, with skies and clouds, I think for at this stage, I'm just going to add a little bit of ultra blue. Just a little bit of alizarin. Boy, this is powerful stuff. And I'm just making a little kind of a pink purple with a lot of white in it to kind of show where my clouds are going to be. I'm making the uh, tops of the clouds the same color as the bottom for now, just so I can see where they are, to see how that design is going to look. Let's see if this is going to be too dark. That's perfect. Now with this, I'm going to know where my clouds are going to start and stop. I should maybe do something like this instead of that. I've got too many going this way. I think I'll do it that way. I'm having opposing angles. I've got a lot going this way. Ah, the clouds going the other way. I'm a big fan of opposing angles. And I'll have this cloud go off. Smaller mountains, bigger clouds. Bigger mountains, smaller clouds. This is my balance theory. And opposing angles. Boom, 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 boom. All right. I want to see what I can do about some background sky color. So I'm using some ultra blue. And just a touch of Naples. I'd like to make it a little darker. And let's see how that works. We're going to give that a try. And what I do with the knife is just cover in some areas that are like big piles of color and then I'll come back with a brush and spread it out more. So I'm and I get a better sense of my design. So what we're going to have to figure out here is how to use that alizarin color we used to have, I mean it's uh, viridian color, and get it down here. I have time, I'll work on that here in just a little bit. And you're probably saying, mine looks sloppy. Well that's good, mine does too. But some things are happening here. I've got some color value in, and I know 
from looking at this, we can start figuring out tomorrow what needs to go darker, lighter, more warmth, more cool, and go from there. I'm going to add a little bit more gray, blue, gray, ultra blue, and put some of that in the clouds. That'll bring a little bit more intensity to these colors before we end this painting. Alrighty, Zoomers, how are you doing? So, George, are you not putting those mountains behind it? Are you not, not using those? Thanks, for, in the back? thanks for bringing that to my attention, Jan. Let's do that right now. This is a blue-gray, and we'll put those in, in the background. And I might as well add a little light to the top of these clouds. This is this is just titanium white, thin, and give a little bit more impression of what's going on up there. One thing I can tell about this block end compared to our other block ends, I haven't got the intensity of color. I think this is coming on pretty good, but I miss our viridium. So I'm going to see what I can do about that right now. I'm going to make some yellow ochre, cad yellow light. White. Adding a little more yellow. white. Just can't get the intensity. I get a nice light green, which is great, but I'm not going to work up here yet. Let me see. Let me screw up my painting before you try it. It's just uh, can't get that viridian look, which is really on the blue side of the color scale. It's nice, but it's not what we're looking for. All righty. So that brings us to the end of block in. I've got a few minutes left. So I'm going to start working on foreground a little bit more. Ultra, gray, ultra, gray, adding some uh, cad red. And now you can see some intensity of the of a darker value. There's also a lot of red in this area too, and I'm going to add some of that in there. Anthony, can you kill your uh, your mic? We're picking up your background. And let's add some red to that mixture. and mixing in some maples and we'll get some of that rust color that you see out here so much. 
So I'm starting to add some textured warms in here with these reds. It's kind of a rust red. So I started with a um, ultra blue and gray and uh, added some uh, red to it. God, some of these colors are just stunning. I love these. The, this, it seems so unassuming, but it adds so much to, to this foreground, this little bit of red in there. I'm going to, since I still have some green, really strong green on my palette, I'm going to try some of that with gray. And now some Naples. And it's warming it up my, my mixture. And I'm going to be adding some of that in here too. love using these big brushes, particularly at this stage of the painting, because it just gets down the road so quick for covering up and trying how these different values are working with each other or not working with each other. I think I need some stronger darks in the foreground right in here. And I'm going to use some what little maples I have left with some gray and put some, some of this lighter color up in here, lighter warm. Alright, that has to bring it to an end today because of my time. Zoomers, you're welcome to stay on and uh, discuss your challenges today. And thanks so much, YouTubers, for coming by. And with that, we'll get ready for part number two tomorrow. Alright, bye-bye.